Hi guys, today we've got a tutorial on the driver, the big gun. The most common issue people have is slicing and just not getting the carry distance they should be, not getting the ball flight they wish for, the control of the flight, ultimately just not using the driver in an optimal way, the way it's been designed to be used because it is almost like a different sport, the driver, like putting. It's almost a game within a game because the ball is teed up it's got so much less loft, it's a much bigger head, it's so much longer. It's a very different task to hit a ball high off a tee peg than it is off the floor. So we need to adapt. A couple of simple things we can do just to ensure that we're enabling ourselves to use this golf club in a more effective way. The first thing I want you to do is take your stance and take your trail hand off the club and then just rotate 90 degrees to the trail side. So as a right-hander, I'm just taking my right hand off the club and turning 90 degrees to my right. Left-handers, obviously left hand and turn 90 degrees to the left. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna swing the golf club with the intention of hitting the ball behind me. And what I want you to recognize while you're doing this is yes, the arc is gonna be swinging away from you unless there's some real funky things going on here. If we can just swing the club away so we're accelerating the club and just let the shaft rotate and notice what the wrist does. If this is happening, where you get this extension of the wrist, it all breaks down, then you're probably one of those guys who's using a lot of wrist flexion and extension, this horizontal hinge in old money, to square the face. And this is one way of doing it, but it's gotta have the required body motion to enable you to do it in, a, in an effective way. And that's okay if you're, if you're comfortable with that and it's controllable. But for most of us, we want to be using the supination of the wrist and forearm here. We want to show the palm to the sky, not wrist extension, where the palm's not getting rotated it's just moving from side to side, i.e. horizontal. We're actually rotating it. So that's a very different feel and a different look. So now, palms up, and you'll notice my wrist hasn't been compromised in terms of flexion extension. So this enables us to maintain. Hi guys, we're going back to Turkey, to the glorious Serenity Resort. It's a five-star golf resort and we're there in April from the 21st to the 24th. It's four days of coaching and playing with myself and Fars and one of the GRF staff and five nights at the fantastic Serenity Five Star Resort. If like me, you're fancying a bit of guaranteed sun, be sure to join us, but be quick because there's one space left and we hope to see you join the group. So this enables us to maintain the swing direction as opposed to this using that extension, suddenly flings the club around, severely deflecting it off its natural path. And that would require, if we were using this method, a very different body action to accommodate this. But we just want to recognize a nice easy swinging motion that doesn't put such a high athletic demand on the body. So just allowing, essentially, the forearm and the wrist to just rotate, allowing the club face to point to the ground. And start the rotation very early. Now, what you'll notice is this swing path with a very free swinging arm here. So this is a lever, we're not trying to hold it straight, we're just letting it swing from the shoulder. Use the torso, use the shoulders and throw the arm and club behind you and let this club rotate. Notice where it's going, it's going out to the right. If I just maintain this arc, and this is the tricky bit, just sense the arc, sense the rotation of the shaft on the arc, you'll notice when you're doing it, the club's rotating whilst it's still behind the hand. It's starting to rotate here. Not when it's passing the hand, I'm not relying on this pivot here to flip it and close the face, it's actually starting to rotate much earlier while it's behind the hinge. And this hinge here, this is pulling it because we're rotating. 
So you've got a lever system that's directed this way. The reason we're stood here is just to really accentuate the feel. And now we can start to we can challenge ourselves to feel where the arc is. Now, as we're going to maintain that arc and we're going to turn around. But we're not going to move this club off its path. Feeling that same path all the time, that same rotation. And moving into a place where you feel you are best positioned to enable this to continue. And then hold the finish. And then bring the trail hand in, so my right hand. Now I can start to feel where I need to be with the body to facilitate that movement. Now I'm going to swing back and through on the same arc that I was feeling earlier. So now I can feel what I need to do in my back swing. And this is an arc that's on the way up. Because we were positioned away from where we were swinging, here we've got an arc that's naturally tilted upward. As I move around, I'm maintaining that angle of attack that we're going to have. Feeling that rotation and feeling the finish and then swinging back and through from there. Of course, this is an exaggeration. We're feeling extreme range. So now in a golf swing, we would want to sequence from the ground up on the way down. We'd be rotating with the lower body, the hips, the torso. And that's now going to throw the hands on a much different path. going to start to bring the hands in but notice where the club head is because it's lagging behind it's still traveling out not as extreme as per the exercise because we took ourselves to an outer range where then when we put both hands on and start to make a more normal kind of golf swing brings us into a very functional range for a golf swing because we've got to be able to match the end of the chain the reaction to the body movement so it can flow and not compromise the body movement. So everything starts to play its role in the full sequence. So once we've got that feeling, both hands on the club and just explore that rotation. What I suggest you do is just play a shot and see what happens with that arc. And as expected, a lot of draw, started right, curved off to the left. So it was quite excessive. Don't be put off if that happens first time because it's exactly what we intended to do. What we didn't have was probably the pivot working in a way to balance out this release pattern because as we rotate, this lags. As it's lagging, the face is rotating less. So your rotation will balance out the rotation of the club face. So as we improve the rotation of the body, the pivot essentially helps to regulate the release pattern and the rotation of the face. And that's what we're gonna look at next. So the next exercise is looking at the rotation of the body. And something, again, we see very commonly is a lack of appreciation, really, of how much the body can rotate if we just rotate from the ground up. So taking the follow through, for example, most people think of chest facing target, turn the hips through, or trail shoulder, move into the target. But what tends to get missed is looking at the feet and the ankles, because we can get a lot of rotation from the ankles. So what I'd like you to do is take a normal stance and just put your hands on your hips and rotate to the target. And what you might do first is use your chest and your shoulders, and you might find you've kind of rotated thinking yeah I'm facing to the, facing the target but the hips and the pelvis are under rotated and your pressure might still be on the inside of your lead foot you might not have actually rotated your lead ankle and what we're doing here is we're just letting our body know what it's like to rotate from the ground up and now let the hip react rotate the pelvis and let the torso follow you can even put your hand on your collarbone so put your right hand on your collarbone there and this should be the last thing to react. And notice what your trail foot does. So my right foot naturally pushes off the toe. And you can use that push off. Use that right foot push off to rotate the pelvis and then into a finish.
So you can start to feel this sequence. If you're still unsure whether the feet are working correctly, what I suggest you do is, well, you could use your, your golf club. Stand on the shaft, making sure the shaft's running through the middle of the feet. And we go toe to heel, toe to heel. Left toe, right heel, right toe, left heel. So we've got these linear forces here enabling us to rotate the pelvis. That pressure shift from toe to heel, heel to toe is assisting the segmental rotation of the pelvis. It's not actually rotation from the ground, it's rotation through the ankles and the hips we get in in response to moving back and forth with the pressure. So you should feel the heel toe, toe heel motion first, then the pelvis rotate, then the torso at the end. And then just let yourself go into a finish. Then take the claw and then make some easy half swings. Shifting your attention to the feet and ankles. Just be mindfully aware of what's happening from the waist down and letting the upper body react. And then taking yourself into that finish that you felt. Particularly with that lead foot, ankle and hip. Remembering to initiate with the feet both back and through. Really important that we're feeling it from the ground up on the way back, ground up on the way through. Taking that into a feeling now with the arc, shifting our awareness onto the arc. If you need a refresher, just take your address position, Take your trail end of the club, rotate away, and just remind yourself of where that is. Feeling an outward arc on the up, rotating face, and then bringing the feet back round. Then bring the trail hand on, and now start to feel the feet initiate the back swing, and then the through swing. And just have a few swings. Just sensing that rotation. And then, let's get a ball. By focusing on this movement, it's allowing us to pivot the body to fire that sequence on that desired into our arc, releasing the face, creating that draw. And what we've done here is we've got a recognizable way of sensing the arc, the rotation of the face, so we can start to regulate the face and path with the big stick and give ourselves maximum margin for error. From this, once you've started drawing the ball, you can move around. You already know where probably the fade is. Most of us are fading the driver. We can move into that space and start to shift the swing direction to the left. So we're not saying that you have to draw the ball. What we're doing first is just starting to create a more functional use of the body as a pivot, letting the lever system just react and use that all important centrifugal force. So it's working in our favour. And then, once we get comfortable with this, we can start to orientate ourselves and start to get more expressive and exploratory with the ball fly. But first of all, most of us are searching for that consistency. So we've got to sense what it is first so we can reset every time, recognise it with our practice swing, using these couple of simple exercises which are going to help us achieve that almost every time.